Adobe BXD is an awesome tool for UI UX design, but it can do so much more such as creating these awesome looking background patterns for your websites and mobile apps. So in this video, we're going to discuss just that. How can you utilize Adobe XD's functionality with all of its great features like repeat, grid, 3D transforms and so much more. So let's get started. Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and before we jump into today's tutorial, make sure to check out the link below for the practice file if you want to follow along this tutorial or if you just want to see how I created all of these different patterns. There are going to be 10 of them in total in the practice file, but you can of course create more for your own projects and I do encourage it for you to do so. So without any further ado, let's jump inside Adobe XD and let me show you how to create these awesome looking patterns. So here is our practice file for this particular tutorial. Once again, if you want to get it, make sure to click the link in the description if you want to open it up and look at all of these uh, patterns which I created. Basically, I just have these two uh, colors and I have three different character styles. All of them are Google fonts and you can access them easily. So let me quickly show you what I have created. So if I preview this, I simply animated all of them to loop uh, left and right and you can see how they look like. We basically have a geometric shapes like triangles like circles like squares diamonds and we also have these lines and all of these different shapes so let me walk you through one by one just to show you how they look like so if I hide these layer panels just to see so here we have just simple lines then here we have more squiggly lines then here we have more uh, straight lines then here we have a background shape which is looping here we have geometric lines, uh, geometric shapes, sorry, like circles in this case. Then here we have these different squares. Here we have diamonds. Here we have triangles. And here we have a bit more of these uh, geometric looking shapes. So basically how to create this is I prepared this file just for this particular demonstration to show you, but basically you can utilize many different techniques and tools inside of Adobe XD, starting with the pen tool, which is the most simplest one. So if I select my pen tool right here and click from the starting point, then click to create basic shape, something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect and basically you can experiment to do with it, whatever you want. Once you're happy with your shape, you can hit escape then you can click right here for the round cap and when you click round cap the only thing which you have to do next is simply click right here and then right here i want to do this following these particular colors but of course you can select any one uh, of the colors that you have prepared right here or to choose any kind of custom color then once we actually did that what i'm going to do is hit repeat grid and inside of my repeat grid, I want to unzoom a little bit just to show you, I can expand it just a bit more until I can see one of them created right here. Then I can hover right here to find the meeting point and then I can click. It's uh, currently 20 pixels distance between these two lines, but I want to go the opposite way and I want to drag it to the left just so I can come right here to the minus, for example. So what I can do is hover and click and I can go until they meet or I can go somewhere around here. Now what's great about repeat grid is you can always jump back inside of it. So for example, if I use my selector and double click inside, let's open it up right here. And let's call it pattern. Just so that we know what it is. And if I click on my pot and double click inside to access it, I can come right here and edit these points and change the shape even more. So if I click right here, for example, then right here, maybe I want to drag it a little bit. Maybe I want to loop it down in another direction, maybe something like in this, then click and move both of those points in, then maybe move this. Maybe I want them to intersect a little bit more, for example, something like this, just to create a bit more polished shape. Of course, this is all up to you. You can do with it whatever you want. Then you can arc this right here or you can bring it down. You can do whatever you want. So for example, maybe I want to position it right here just so that we can avoid this button a little bit. And then here comes the fun part. After you've done this, then you can simply click on one of these handles and extend it and create more patterns. Now you cannot rotate the repeat grid per se, but what you can do is hit Ctrl or Command G to put it in a group, call it pattern once again, and then click 
and rotate it however you want to achieve this different shape. But if you're not happy with how this looks like, for example, I want to position it in the center, you can click on one of the points and still access your repeat grid. It's going to take it into this direction, but perhaps I want to take it into this direction to create more of these lines. Then I can move my lines in the center and for example, lower down the overall opacity to 20% by hitting two. And if I open it up in a preview, you can see how it looks like. So it's super simple to create, but it gives your website a bit more dynamic look. It gives it a bit more modern look. Now you don't have to do this uh, all the time in hero sections, but you can do this as a sort of unassuming background element, unassuming background pattern on shape. So you can do that if you want to. Then what I want to show you, let's get rid of this pattern. I can create a basic geometric shape like circle, for example, then I can remove the fill and use this for my border. Then what I can do is call it pattern straight away, move it down a little bit, double click inside of my shape and add another point. So for example, something like this, maybe I want to create a coffee bean sort of shape or something like that. You can also do this with your client's logos or whatever you want. Then for example, I can exit out and I can come right here to rotate it. Maybe I want to position it roughly around here and then hit repeat grid. Before I do, maybe I want to enlarge it a little bit to roughly around here, hit repeat grid, do the same thing. So expand it right to here. And then what I can do is bring it all the way into here. Once again, you can edit all of these anchor points like I just showed you with a line example, but you can come right here and see where they intersect. Do you like that shape? And I'm not really a big fan of this shape. So what I'm going to do is come inside of the pattern, double click inside, double click once more. And for example, edit something like this then click right here and for example extend it all the way up to here as i showed you you can intersect them if you want to but i think this is going to work just fine and then finally as i explained you can go into this direction but the fun bit about uh, repeat grid in adobe xd is you can go in this direction so you can create as many copies as you want but before you do what you can do is come right here and then hover and then jump in right here and position them wherever you want. But let's say somewhere around here, let's create this incredibly messy shape complex. So when I click right here, drag them down, drag them all the way to here, rename this to pattern, group it once more, call that pattern and position it in the center, lower down the opacity to 20%. And when I go into my preview, you can see how it looks like. So it's completely messy. It's completely crazy, but it looks kind of cool. And you can rotate it. As I explained, you can position it in any direction that you want. And now, for example, if I put it into this position, because we included repeat grid in both directions, all you have to do to extend it down is simply click on this point and simply drag it. So when I preview once more, you can see that now goes into this direction. It's amazing what you can do with it. And of course you can, for example, position a nice background gradient. So let's position one right here, something like that. And let's switch from fill color to linear gradient. For my darker color, I want to apply this color. For my lighter color, I want to go all the way to here, for example. So then I can position it maybe roughly around here. Let's say something like this. And then I can even go a step further and for example, position it right here. Maybe I want to go to here and select this color once more for my lighter shade like this. And then for this side, sorry, for this side, I want to lower it all the way down to zero. I want to get rid of my border and then I want to perhaps lower down the opacity a bit. I want to position it below my elements. And now we have this nice looking gradient, which is not going to disturb too much, but it's just going to cover up the shape. So it's a bit more visible and a bit less distracting on the page. Final thing, which I want to show you for this video is how to use 3d transforms. So let's create a simple square, for example, something like this. And let's get rid of the fill color. Once again, let's use this for the border color and let's go even a step further. Let's round up the corners a little bit, something like this, and let's call it pattern once again. What I'm going to do in this particular case is you can do this two ways and it works in two ways. So you can first create your repeat grid or you can come right here 
and rotate it. So when you click right here for the 3D transform, what you can do is rotate it a bit, maybe roughly around here, something like that. You can exit out of your 3D transform and then go inside of your repeat grid, jump inside, create your shapes, something like that. And then you can do the same thing so you can intersect them, you can bring them uh, in any kind of direction that you want. But the fun bit is this one. When I click on it and jump inside, I can edit all of them at the same time using this 3D transform. So if for whatever reason I don't like uh, the orientation, maybe I want to put them into a completely different orientation, maybe something like this. Maybe I want to go into this direction and then inside of my repeat grid, maybe I want to bring them closer to here, maybe something like this. Then I can position this in the center and perhaps even group it. So let's call it pattern, put it in a group, control G, call it pattern again, and snap it to here and then extend it all the way down. And because you still have that control, you can expand it to this side because they are in a group. You can even rotate it if you want to. And then it's a bit difficult to select because they are outlined, but maybe I can put it right here and then do the same thing once again. So you can expand it all the way down. And the great thing about it is, for example, I want to apply a different color for my border. Let's click right here. So 3EC6FF for a nice blue color. It's going to apply to all of them at the same time. And once again, the great thing is I don't like this approach. Let's go back to white. Maybe I want to rotate them to this direction something like that. And maybe I want to rotate them to this direction so I can get a completely different shape to something like this. And once again, once you're happy with your result, I always recommend lowering down your opacity at least a bit. So in this case, maybe not 20%, maybe 50 or 60%, something like that. So when you preview, you can see how it looks like. What I'm going to do in this case is because I have two screens, I'm going to point this right here and you're not going to see my, uh, second screen, but I'm going to show you in real time. You can do this with your client. So you can preview this in real time. You can show this to them and position it maybe something like this. Maybe you can expand them. You can see that we have some sort of a void right here. So it's always a great approach when you can do that to show to your clients. I promise you they're going to be blown away with what you can show to them. Of course, you can always jump in right here and expand them a bit more perhaps something like this. And I think gradient would work just fine in this particular example. So maybe roughly around here. And don't forget when you want to exit out of the 3D transform, make sure to click right here and it's going to basically bring you back to here. What's amazing about this is you can always retain your editability. So when you click back into your shape, I can always jump in right here. You can see that for the corner radius, we have 13, but maybe I want to position them to be 50. So you can see all of them are editing at the same time retaining all of that editability. It's non destructing editing and you can always go back. So now we are at 50. I want to click right here and rotate the original one. So perhaps into this direction and get a completely different shape. So with this approach, really sky is the limit because you can see uh, I didn't create this shape um, ever before. It's basically this is the first time that I created it because there are so many possibilities with this repeat grid, with 3D transforms, with all of these amazing editing options of Adobe XD. And don't forget, when you apply a style like a color, for example, to this particular shape. So once I right click, apply border color, I can right click, apply border color to this one. So Further down the line, if my client, for example, for whatever reason, doesn't like this color, maybe they want to choose some other color. So I can go right here and I can actually show you that uh, for my original example. Let me quickly go back to here, select my pattern and simply select white. So they are all the same. So let's say that my client decides that they want a color like this. So maybe let's choose, um, I don't know what will go well with this one. So maybe a nice purple, something like this light purple. Let's bring it out and let me select it right here. And let's call it I don't know main. So right click rename, call it main, something like that. What I can do in this case is jump inside. And because we edited all of them, let's say that I want to uh, change this color to main so I can edit and I can select this color. 
and you can see that it changes in real time. So because this color was applied to the text, just imagine that it was applied everywhere else. So what I can do in this particular case is go back to here and I can select all of my artboards and click right here. It's just going to add my white color because that was the color of all of these shapes. And now just watch what happens. So I can simply click right here and let's say edit. I can click right here, then click right here. And it's going to basically apply this color to every single shape which I have created. So that is the amazing power of Adobe XD and what you can do with Adobe XD. So once again, I really encourage you to test out all of these different colors to play around with them to see what can you do uh, inside of Adobe XD and basically play around with 3D transform, play around with uh, all of these amazing tools which I show you and I'm going to actually link this one as well because I think it's quite fun inside of this background patterns uh, practice file. So once again, that's what you can do in Adobe XD and it's amazing tools. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you have, make sure to press the like button, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I upload new videos every single week all about Adobe XD and design, design resources just like this one and so much more. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe to follow up with the new videos which I'm going to create. Thank you so much for watching once again. Until next time, take care.